Good day everyone. I'm Christine Albernal. I am Denver Lucantara, a VS2 student. So I'm currently taking a Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. Okay, so for today's topic, we're going to discuss about the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers. Hope you listen and hope you learn something through this video. Thank you very much. So this is the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers. Okay, so pursuant to the provision of Paragraph E, Article 2 of Republic Act Number 7836, otherwise known as the Philippine Professionalization Act of 1994 and Paragraph A, Section 6, PD Number 223 as amended, the Board of Professional Teachers hereby adopt the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers based on Resolution Number 435-1997. Preamble Teachers are duly licensed professional who possess dignity and reputation with high moral values as well as technical and professional confidence in the practice of their noble profession they strictly adhere to ad observe and practice this set of ethical and moral principles standards and values okay so first, we are going to define what is a uh, code of ethics. So code of ethics, it is a guide principle designed to help professionals act with honesty and integrity. A written set of rules and management to help them uh, conduct their actions in accordance, its primary, in accordance with its primary values and standards. So that's the meaning of a code of ethics. Article 3, The Teacher and the Community Section 1, A teacher is a facilitator of learning and of the development of the youth. He shall therefore render the best service by providing an environment conducive to such learning and growth. So, facilitator comes from the word facilitate which means to make it something easy to e or easier so you as a professional teacher facilitate learning or make learning easier learning is a difficult uh, task and it's made easier when you make dry lesson to interesting exciting and enjoyable so as a professional teacher it is up to us to facilitate learning a con conducive learning environment is necessary so it has been proven that learners uh, learn best in the pleasant environment a pleasant environment is where the learners can be themselves because teachers are are caring so next section 2 every teacher shall provide leadership and initiative to actively participate in community movements for a moral social educational economic and civic betterment so here in section 2 so it refers to the leadership and initiative of the professional teacher to, pa to participate in community movements for moral social economic and civic betterment for the community so we as a teacher you do not live in the ivory tower so meaning uh, you are not supposed to be removed aloof from a community life so school are the heart of the communities and you are as a professional teachers are expected to be in the world and to be in the world so with others and for others so the word the words in section 2 of article 3 are provided leadership and initiative so this implies that as a professional teacher you have not to wait for a community to ask for help because in article 3 section 6 says here every every teacher is intellectual leader in the community especially in barangay and shall welcome the opportunity to provide such leadership when needed to extend counseling service as appropriate and to actively be involved in matters affecting 
the welfare of the people. You do not just welcome the opportunity to lead. Section 2 states that you, the professional teacher, ought to take initiative to offer your help for the improvement of the community. Next, Article 3, Section 3. Every teacher shall merit reasonable social recognition for which purpose he shall behave with honor and dignity at all times and refrain for such activities as gambling, smoking, drunkenness, and other excess, excesses much less illicit relations. Okay, here in Section 3, we as a professional teacher, we must take our honor and dignity. If it's as a professional teacher, you are an in invalidate gambler, chain smoker, and alcoholic, or if it is a common knowledge that you are engaged in an illicit relationship, so how can you have a moral authority? So how will listen to you when you are advised your class not to smoke? or not to drink alcohol, alcoholic drinks, and etc. So your all audience will say that, look, who is talking? It is a matter of do what I say, not what I do. So society expect so much of teachers that when they fail to live up to the challenge to behave or model good behavior they are condemned without trial so it is not it is no wonder why many uh, are afraid to answer the calling to teach so society seems to expect much more from professional teachers so that's why uh, let me share this quotation to everyone the influence of the good teacher can never be erased but the influence of the dishonorable teacher is is as lasting next is section 4 every teacher shall live for and with the community and shall therefore study and understand local costumes and traditions in order to have sympathetic attitude therefore refrain from disparaging the community okay um, here in section 4 teachers attitude towards local costumes and traditions so uh, as a professional teacher uh, is is either ethnocentric or nor senocentric he she is not ethnocentric and so does not look down on the community's culture because of the thought that his her culture is a superior to the culture of the community inferior to the other community community's culture so fortunately fortunate, fortunate uh, and happy is the community that has teacher have lived with them exert effort to understand their local costumes and traditions and consequently appreciate the same so this author since no culture as perfect so every culture including hers has its positive and negative aspect so what we need to fast on are the positive aspect of the culture so we need to purify however the negative aspect with a teacher pointing them pointing them out and sincerely. Section 5 states that the teacher shall help the schools to inform the community about the school's work, accomplishments, needs, and problems. Community here refers to internal as well as external stakeholders. Internal stakeholders include the students, the parents, of the students and the teachers. The external stakeholders are the other parents in the community 
without children enrolled in school, barangay officials, and other government officials. Non-government organizations, government organizations, alumni, and retirees. Why do these stakeholders have to be informed? The school is there for the community, and so the community has to write to be informed about its activities, accomplishments, needs, and problems. Informing them about the school's projects, needs, and problems give them a sense of ownership. Having a sense of ownership, these stakeholders will participate more actively in the resolution of school's problems and needs. We have parents and teachers associations or PTA in place in every school. Some private schools call it Home School Association or Family Advisory Council. This is for internal stakeholders only. A PTA is an association of teachers and parents with children who are enrolled in a school. It is a forum for discussions on school problems and how they can be solved. Other than the PTA is the School Governing Council. The SGC has different membership and functions. A school governing council as a policy-making body has the school head as chief executive officer, manager, and chief operations officer. The formation of SGC in every school is a proof of school head sharing his or her leadership with members of the community. It determines general policies on student welfare, discipline, and well-being. It is centered with the development and implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of the School Improvement Plan or SIP and the reporting of the progress of the SIP implementation to the school's division superintendent and the community. In addition to PTAs, are the school governing council in every public school. This school governing council shares in the management of the school with the school head as chair. This school council is another opportunity for communities to participate in school activities. Section 7 states that every teacher shall maintain harmonious and pleasant personal and official relations with other professionals, with government officials, and with the people individually or collectively. In professional teachers, they cannot afford not to be in pleasant relations with others, especially those with whom you work with, like other professional teachers. It is always best to be in good terms with everyone else in the community. Desiderata gives this advice. As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others, then the dull and the ignorant. They too have their story. And finally, Section 8 says, A teacher possesses freedom to attend church and worship as appropriate, but shall not use his position and influence to prosale others. To be in a position means to have a power or influence for a purpose. For you to use that position to perform your job as a professional teacher, it is highly unprofessional for a teacher like you to use your position of influence to Brazil. And 
that's all of our report. Thank you for listening.